Hey guys, Chris here. I want to talk to you about something that is usually taboo among people and that is a budget. And specifically I'm going to tell you about our Baja budget and so far how we're doing um, just one weekend. And I'll show you hopefully over the next couple weeks and months, every week my goal is to show you how we're doing, what we've learned, what things we're changing, um, and little tricks that we pick up along the way. So to get started with that, I want to talk about our budget and why it's personal to us and we're willing to share that because we want you to understand what your budget might be. As you know, we live full time out of our truck camper. This is our life, our lifestyle. This is not a vacation. As such, we have to look at our budget very differently than um, you may look if you're on a vacation, if you've got a couple weeks here or maybe even a couple months. It's different when every dollar, or in this case peso, goes towards something else. So for us, for instance, our budget is based roughly on three daily expenses, our food, our accommodation or camping, and our miscellaneous or our contingency or our tours, whatever we do. And with that, we budget 10 US dollars for food per day, 10 US dollars for camping per day, and 12 US dollars for whatever happens per day. And those are our three key daily expenses. We try to look at them daily, um, but what we do is we take all the money for a week and we withdraw it from our ATM, which I'll talk about shortly. And with that, we set the money aside or put it in my wallet or put it someplace where we say, okay, this is our weekly money. This has to last us the whole week. And if it makes us go a little bit farther than a week, great, because the next week we won't have to take out so much. On the other hand, if you're traveling for vacation, you might say, ah, we're at a restaurant, we're only here once, let's go ahead and, you know, spend the money on this or spend the money on that. Or you may get to a town and say, well, we could free camp over here, but there's a really nice $25 campground over here, let's go over there. Or you might say, wow, look at that tour. That's a really great idea. Let's just go ahead and throw the money down. Or the fish are, are offshore. Let's go hire a boat and let's go out and catch some fish. Now, all those things are great and we don't judge you for that. We're just trying to give you the background for who we are as we travel and how our budget works for us. We do plan on doing some fun things. Part of our strategy, of course, is making friends as we go and maybe being invited into opportunities we would not normally have. But we're also budgeting for things like going and swimming with whale sharks and for going out and seeing... Um, blue whales and um, humpback whales and doing those kinds of activities that you would expect to do here in Baja. Taking a look at those three expenses, there's also another expense which is budgeted for um, but varies greatly and that's fuel. Uh, we're completely surprised by the fuel prices we're seeing here in Baja. In the United States, I thought I over budgeted for our travel by saying about $4 per gallon per diesel for diesel. Uh, and when we got here, that was kind of, I was like, oh, $4 is probably about what it'll be. Um, because I understood that costs were, that costs were a little bit higher here in, in Mexico. Well, our first tank of gas really set us back, like well over $4 and, per gallon per diesel. And that, that really shook up our, our budget. So what we decided to do with fuel and what we had budgeted was around 60 US dollars, 60 to 65 US dollars per week. And that would be one tank of gas every other week, more or less. And what that means for us in terms of our travel is if we're going too fast, we're going to run out of gas money, which means we're going to have to stop somewhere and stay somewhere. And that's kind of the strategy in moving south. So we're not in a big rush. Again, our trip may be different from yours. You may need to get all the way down to the peninsula to see everything and get back in a matter of a couple of weeks or a couple of months. But for us, we're taking six months to see as much of Baja as we can, where we're going down relatively quickly, three or four days here or there. And then we're trying to get to Cabo Palma in the south, reevaluate the places that we really enjoyed, and then take our time with two or three weeks in a certain place on our way back up. That being said, Fuel is expensive here in Mexico. All fuel, unleaded fuel, diesel fuel. And um, so that budget is, <laughs> it, it, it's challenging for us with the fuel. 
because there's some places we may not want to stop, but we run out of our fuel budget. And because we live full time in our truck camper, we have to stick to our budget. We have to. We have to save money everywhere we can, so we try to be under budget every time we can, but we have to stick to this budget because, again, this is our life. So in looking at our travel budget, I want to say it is separate from our full budget, which includes expenses that we have to carry, even though they're not Mexican expenses. Things like auto insurance, we do have to keep a, a small policy on our truck, even though we're in Mexico and we have Mexican auto insurance. We do have a small policy, um, and that's something I'll have to write about. It's too hard to explain, um, but we do have that. Health insurance. We have to keep our health insurance in the United States, um, and that's very important to us, especially Lindsay with Crohn's disease. If anything happens here and we're going back to the United States, got to have our health insurance. We also have uh, medical expense for health supplements and vitamins. It's kind of funny and not to get political, but it is more expensive for Lindsay to treat herself naturally with these vitamins and supplements than it was for her to go and get an IV infusion every, every eight weeks. And since we've given up on that and we don't want the negative consequences of that IV infusion, uh, we decided we are going to budget 100% for these vitamins. That's a couple hundred dollars a month that we're spending that's outside of this budget. We also have a small entertainment budget. Yes, Netflix works in Mexico. Yes, we've got it. Are we spoiled for having it? Judge us, don't judge us, whatever. We have that set aside and we also have Spotify Premium because we need some kind of entertainment and music as we travel, as we're hanging out. Uh, beyond that, we've got a small budget for our, our business expenses, which are monthly premiums that we have for the different tools that we use, like Adobe um, and having uh, Tailwind for Instagram and so forth. So we do have that set aside as well. And beyond that, um, that's really it for our, our personal expenses outside of these Mexican expenses. Because your life is different than ours, you will have your own set of expenses and you'll have to account for those expenses. We look around at other people as we travel and we say, man, what if life was like this? Or what if life was like that? And then we say, nope, our life is this life. And we're making decisions based on the information that we have about our life and how we make our decisions. So if you have other circumstances, maybe you've got um, medical insurance is covered, so you don't have to pay for that. Maybe you've got um, no medical conditions at all, so you don't have to budget having vitamins or supplements or anything like that. You don't run a business, you're just out trying to enjoy life as much as you can. You may have other expenses. We sold everything we have, we never owned a home together, so we didn't have other expenses back home that you may have, like um, you know paying a mortgage and having expenses related to that. We don't have a second vehicle uh, back in Florida. We don't have some things that you may have. So again, our goal in this is to show you how we make decisions and how we think about those decisions when it comes to our budget so that you can then make the decisions that are best for you. Going back into our Baja budget, I gotta use my cheat sheet here. So we have um, 10 US dollars at an exchange rate of about 18 pesos per dollar. Um, when you get your money out of an ATM, that gives us about 180 pesos for meals, 180 pesos for camping, and 216 pesos for our miscellaneous, which does include utilities like water, propane, and so forth. So that's a total of about 4,000 pesos per week. And I'll actually take that money and set it aside, and we'll put it in, in an envelope. And that's our money for the week, and we have to go buy that. With our $60, $65 per week in fuel, that comes to approximately 2,300 pesos every other week, and that's our fuel budget. And with our tank being about 35 gallons worth of diesel, and the cost of fuel being four and a half to almost $5 per gallon, um, we definitely go through this budget pretty quickly. By the way, any money we save by not spending on things in our budget, because we're full-time, we don't say, oh, hey, look, we've got 500 pesos left over. Let's go out and you know, have a night on the town. What we do is we very simply, we just roll that into the next week. Uh, and gradually we're building a snowball that will be hopefully a big enough saving. So when we get to a place where there's whale sharks to swim with, we look at our budget and say, yep, oh, there's the money right there. Let's go do this. 
An alternative is to take that savings from the week and go ahead and put it into an envelope and tuck it away somewhere and kind of sort of forget about it until later. You can go with either strategy, but again, for us, because we're living full-time on the road, every peso we save is a peso we can use to keep us on the road for another day or another week or another month. And that's our goal. This is our life. We love it. We love everything about this life, even living in tiny spaces and having things break and fall apart and not always being as glamorous as you see in Instagram. But we, we love this life and we want to live it as long as we possibly can. So we're very, very responsible about money. And so far, aside from catastrophic breakdowns, we have been within budget pretty much every month that we've been on the road for almost two years. So, um, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. You have to trust me in that, but I'm very responsible with budgeting our money. Lindsay's very responsible for keeping me to that budget as we make decisions together about what we want to do because we have chosen this life and it's an awesome life. And we just hope to encourage and inspire you, particularly when it comes to budget. Now I want to get into our actual expenses that we've incurred as we came through our first week of being in Baja. So if you put up with all the last of that, hopefully you got a lot of great information out of it. You have to think differently about money in order to be able to make money work for you. And right now we're still working for money, but when we take the money out, we want it to go as far as it possibly can. So I'm going to have to reference my cheat sheet. I'll be looking away a little bit, but looking at our expenses when we crossed the border, or actually before we crossed the border, we started to incur expenses which we had previously budgeted for. So when you come to Mexico, if you're coming into Baja for longer than seven days, you need an FMM. FMMs you can complete online, which we did, and we paid with our credit card online, and our banks did the conversion, and it cost us around $29 per person. Let's just call it $30 per person. So that was a $60 expense for Lindsay and I to have our FMMs completed. You also need to have auto insurance, Mexican auto insurance, when you come across the border. So we went through Baja Bound because we were going to be here for a long period of time. We did a one-year policy, and that ended up costing us just under $360, so around $30 per month. The longer you stay, the better the discount. No policies go over one year, but if you're only coming across for one week, you might get charged $10 per day, whereas we're paying about $1 per day. So look at the amount of time you'd be spending in Baja before you get your Mexican auto insurance and look at the quotes for a six month policy or a year policy, even if you only plan on spending two months or three months, because those policies may be cheap enough for you to then make that decision. So those were expenses we incurred before we came across the border. When we got to the border, we had learned in Tecate to park on the US side, walk our paperwork across go back, pick up our truck camper, and then drive across the border and present our paperwork. So we did that. Parking for us cost $5 to do this. Plenty of parking places around Tecate for you to park. They're all around the same amount, $5 per day, more or less. So you can do that, or you could just drive up to the border and save your $5. We didn't know what we were doing. We went ahead and took that advice, and I think it, it was okay for us, especially with our next expense, which was getting new FMMs. That was a big mistake that we made. When we printed our FMM out online after paying for it, we printed the FMM, the official paperwork, but we failed to print the receipt. And all the Mexican official wanted to see was the receipt. I could have completed a whole new FMM right there, but as long as it's paid for, he would let us go. So we had to pay $32, not the 29 and some change before, because their exchange rate was different than ours, we paid 32 pesos or 32 US dollars per person, $64 more in order to redo our FMMs. So that was a $64 mistake right off the bat. Just took it on the chin, said, whoops, we learned, we want to share with you so you don't make the same mistake and we'll carry on. Then we crossed into Tecate. As I mentioned, we went to the first bank, the first ATM that we saw. We took out our pesos. We got the exchange rate about 17.95. And then we began our daily budgeting for the week and for um, the month. And as we looked at our daily budget, um, these are some of the expenses that we had in our first week. Of course, we drove to Alicitos and to Valle de Guadalupe and then to San Felipe. Every one of our itemized budget expenses 
we incurred to some degree. And here's a summary of each of those. So in Alicitos, going to the grocery store uh, two different times was 515 pesos. Camping for us was 450 pesos. We negotiated 150 pesos per night for three nights. And then we also donated 190 pesos worth of food to fire relief in the area. And we spent 100 pesos on firewood. The donation in the firewood came out of our $12 per day miscellaneous fund. So our total that we spent in Alicitos was 1,255 pesos. From there, we drove with our friends to Valle de Guadalupe. We still had a full tank of gas from the United States, so we haven't had to expense the gas yet. We spent in Valle de Guadalupe $450 in camping fees for one night. That was an expensive night for us. And we also spent $450 going out to breakfast at a fantastic, awesome breakfast place, which we've told you about and we'll link up to. After that time in Valle de Guadalupe, we drove back to Ensenada so we could take the three, the Highway 3 across to San Felipe. So those uh, couple of nights, we spent 150 pesos in going out and we camped two nights of those. The first night we camped in Ensenada, we paid 200 pesos for the night. And the second night was in San Felipe. Our first night in San Felipe, we paid 350 pesos at a place called Pete's. We filled up our tanks and our camper with purified water. That was 100 pesos. We did have to stop for fuel and fill up, and that was a scary thing for us because it was a last minute thing that we couldn't find fuel in Ensenada or we thought we'd see it somewhere down the road. Anyway, we ended up paying a high amount for fuel, over $4.40 per gallon when it was all said and done, and that ate up our full 2,300 peso budget for two weeks. We were only in week one, so knowing that our tank was full, we assume that will get us through week two, and hopefully it will because we don't plan on doing a whole lot of traveling in that week. So if we add up our first week's expenses. On meals, we spent 1,115 pesos. For camping, we spent 1,450 pesos. And for our miscellaneous, we spent 490 pesos. So that put us at 3,055 pesos, which is great because we had budgeted 4,000 for the week. So we actually start week two out a little bit ahead. The problem was with fuel, I was wrong. I forgot we added a little bit of extra fuel at another stop and that was 800 pesos. So we spent 3,100 pesos and we only had 2,300 pesos budgeted. So that 800 pesos we were in the hole comes out of that almost thousand that we saved. So really we're only saving about 200 pesos on the week. However, 200 pesos on the week is one night's budget, one day's worth of food, one day, almost one day's worth of whatever expenses. So we're excited that we're a little bit ahead of budget uh, going into week two's expenses. We know a little bit more now about how to travel in Baja on our first week and how to negotiate a little bit more here or there. So hopefully going into week two, our expenses will be about the same, if not lower, moving forward, and we'll be continue to get more and more lean. As I mentioned, I do plan on updating you guys every week on how we're doing with our budget, so you know if you're traveling to these places how you can plan to budget around your personal circumstances and what you'd like to do. Please comment with any questions or send an email with any questions. We'd love to get back to you with information that will help you. If you like this information, please make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow our story. This is gonna be a part of our story is sharing with you what we're learning as we go from a budgetary standpoint. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, share it with your friends and family, let them know what you wanna do and uh, the journey that you wanna have and let them know that we're out there trying to help you do it. Thanks for following along, catch you next time.